Hello everybody. I would like to show you today how to realize a multifocal ERG exam on the vision monitor system. Our instrument includes a bioelectric amplifier, a stimulator, and a standard PC. The stimulator has a motorized chin rest, a camera with near-infrared illumination, a magnetic bar where a large field refractive lens is attached, and finally, a push button that is used to validate fixation. A number of different pattern stimulation can be generated from the standard 61 down to 19 and up to 217 hexagons. Different patterns of fixation can be used for patients with central scotoma. Before I install the patient, let us take a brief look at the interface. Here is the list of exams we can perform on this machine. I will select the multifocal ERG exam. Here we go. And first thing I do is identify the patient. Here I'm connected to a DICOM server. This is the list of patients scheduled for today. So I will select this one. Automatically I get the name, date of birth, file number. And next, I will select which eye I'm going to test. I have a choice between binocular or monocular right eye or left eye. I do usually prefer to do the exam monocularly to avoid loss of fusion in the middle of the exam. Now I can choose the correction for refraction for that patient. I click on the small icon on the menu that opens a new menu where I can enter the spherical and the cylinder value for distance correction of that patient. I validate and automatically the software will calculate, taking into account the patient's age, what lens in the set of lenses provided with the instrument I can put on the patient. Now we will put drops to dilate the pupils and drops for local anesthesia. Skin electrodes will be placed close to the eye canters and the skin preparation is very important. We can use different electrodes as reference. Here we will use a pre gelified patch. We now connect the reference electrode to the negative input of the amplifier and the neutral electrode, which is on the other side of the head. It is time now to put the active electrode, which is connected to the positive input of the amplifier. Here we are using an ERG jet. It is also possible to use a DTL electrode, although the signal amplitude is about two times lower. Our happy subject is now ready for the exam. We will move to the headrest and install him as comfortable as possible to avoid any muscular contraction that may create artifacts in the recording. Now the software displays the signal recorded from the amplifier. At the same time, the impedance of the electrodes is checked. I get a warning message in green color if impedances are below a preset threshold of 5 kilo ohms. Otherwise, the color of the message will become red and the faulty electrode will be indicated. For example, 1 minus for the reference electrode of channel 1. Electrodes were OK, so I have started the exam by simply pressing the exam button. What is displayed now? is the response after each stimulation, which is actually the sum of all the responses to the different hexagons. On the video window, I visualize the pupil and the corneal reflex. The fixation of my subject is indicated by the position of the little red dot, actually the corneal reflection, in the center of the green circle, actually the pupil. At any time, I can pause the exam to make the patient rest 
or to solve a problem with electrons. After about one minute of recording, there is a sufficient number of responses for the software to automatically calculate the local responses. This is what is displayed now with an indication below the traces of the noise level. Now it's in red color, indicating the noise level is still too high. Uh, this noise level is a good indication of the quality of the result. It should be as low as possible and it will normally improve as I get more responses. High noise level is usually due to eye movements, eye blinks or unstable electrodes. With a good subject, I reach a sufficiently good noise level after about one minute of recording time. In this case, I can press the result button and perform the analysis of the results. However, if I'm dealing with a subject who blinks or makes eye movements, I will certainly need more time to reach an acceptable level of noise.